Hi, Greedy 3 Deers. Welcome to today's episode. Today, we're going to be looking at the Ender 3 V3. This is the latest iteration in the Ender series. Now, I'm pretty certain that the bods at Creality at some point have left a K1 and an Ender 3 in a darkened room, maybe giving them a little bit of wine because something's kicked off here. And this has been born. This might as well have been called the K1 Bed Slinger because it's got so much in common with the K1. It's a little bit unreal. Now, that's not a bad thing. Let's have a little look at it. Let's have a review of it and let's see it printing. Stay tuned. So we talked that the Ender 3 version 3 was a lot like the K1. So let's have a look at what I mean by that. Well, let's start off with the hot end. The hot end is the same hot end that they use on the K1. And the extruder is also the same extruder. Now, Creality did have a few problems with the hot end and the extruder way, way back, but they've sorted that problem out. And I've had a, Cre a Creality K1. And since I've had my hot end and my extruder changed, I've had zero problems with it. It's been a really, really good printer. And so far, so has this Ender 3 using exactly those same components. Now, this hot end will heat up to 300 degrees centigrade, which is going to be plenty hot enough for everything you need and it's got a ceramic hot end in there wonderful and the extruder as well i've had no issues with that that grips the uh, pla really really well the bed itself will heat up to 110 degrees centigrade and the other thing i like about this bed it's got a PEI flex plate on it. Now, I had to buy one of these separately for my K1, but this one comes with it as standard, which is grand. Now, the size of the build volume, again, same as your K1, 220 by 220 by 220. So it ain't the biggest printer on the market. Now, if you're looking to build some cosplay massive pieces in one go, you might be pushing it a little bit on this thing, but there isn't a Ender 3 Max yet. You never know. Watch this space. It's got a belt-driven system too, the same again, as its K1 big brother or mother or father or sister or whatever it is. Uh, and that does allow for some greater speed. And by reducing the weight of this, it's 300 grams lighter than the K1. And they've put L the weight at the bottom. It means it's really, really stable to, uh, to do those high speeds. And when we're talking about the speeds, printing speed on this thing, you can get around about 600 millimeters per second maximum speed and a travel rate of 20,000 millimeters per second. Now on a bed slinger, that's pretty darn good. Now, I'm pretty certain that when you're printing something with a little bit of high detail, you're not going to want those speeds. I usually reduce it down 250, 300, and that gives me what I need. But if you want to bang it up to 600 for some non-detailed prints, this thing's going to throw some stuff out quick. In fact, I did the Benchy on it, and the Benchy actually printed in just under 14 minutes. And the quality of the Benchy was fine. No real problems with it at all. I was quite happy with it. So it is throwing out prints really, really well at those high speeds. It's a Wi-Fi enabled printer running Clipper software. So that basically means that you can connect this to your Creality app on your phone, or you can correct it to your uh, Creality print system in your PC and it will link in perfectly. And I've got to be honest, I've connected it both to my phone and to my PC and using Creality Print, I've had absolutely zero problems with it. Now I know Creality Print is not everybody's favorite uh, slicer package. I've certainly had zero issues with it and I really like it. And I love the way that you can monitor this from that um, app on your phone or also on your PC. Um, there's no camera that comes as standard with it, but you can buy an additional camera. And I think that's a great little addition. It's got the wiring set up at the back here all ready for your camera to be connected to it. So I'm quite happy with that. And, and the K1 camera, although it's not the highest quality in the world, it, it, it does the job admirably. And I'm certain that the, uh, the camera for this is gonna be equally, if not better, as good. That even makes any sense. Assembly of the Ender 3 version 3 was relatively easy. It comes in two main parts, the main bulk bottom part and the gantry there. And the gantry connects together with the main part with just eight bolts, two either side here and then two at the bottom. And once you've tightened those up, it's in and it's done. The only other thing you need to do is connect around about five uh, pieces of the power cables together and that is really really straightforward and simple so once that's done the only other thing you need to do is connect this 4.3 inch touch screen here and that was the fiddliest bit for me the connector I had to play around with it a little bit but that's probably my big fat fingers making that a little bit more difficult but it certainly did the job in the end it connected together fine and um, I'm really happy with it the first thing that happened when I turned it on 
Of course, it asked me what country I was in. It asked me a few little tick box things that I needed to agree to. And then it did an automatic firmware update, which absolutely wonderful. No problems with that one. So I popped in my Wi-Fi details. Um, one thing I will say that I did notice with it was after I'd done the upgrade, I found that the screen suddenly went black and I did think, mm, what's going on here then? Is it broken? But it turned out to be a screensaver. So just touch the screen if your screen goes black. Don't panic as I did. It's not busted. Some of the first things it will do when it's uh, turn, when you turn the machine on for the first time, it will ask you to calibrate it. And it does something called input shaping. Now, what's really important with this machine is you put it on the base where it's going to live. And I'll come back to that why afterwards. But when you've got it where you want it to live, run input shaping. And what input shaping will basically do is vibrate this machine to death. And it will use all sorts of AI witchcraft inside the machine to tell it where it's vibrating and how much it's vibrating. And you will hear it vibrating like mad. And then it uses this witchcraft inside it to even out those vibrations to remove the ghosting from your prints. And so far, I found that has worked really well. Another good point to this printer, which you would expect in 2024, it self levels. You don't need a piece of paper and twiddling four knobs around the side. This thing will self level for you. And that is an absolute must. You can still, if you want to, adjust the Z height a little bit, but that auto leveling I've found so far is wonderful. And one of the things I do like about this printer is it's kind of like a fire and forget machine. I've used it now in anger. I've printed about 12 things on it. And each time I've just pressed print and it's put a base layer down perfectly. It's adhered lovely and it's printed perfectly. So it's a case of I can quite comfortably press print from the front of the machine or I can do it from the comfort of inside the house via the uh, Creality Slicer or the app knowing that it's going to print absolutely fine. Um, the camera on there will just give you a little bit of an added sort of uh, bit of guarantee that everything's working well. But on the whole, I've had no problems with this. And just going back to the K1, on the whole, I've had no problems with that either. I don't usually get foul prints on either of those machines, which is a credit to Creality, really. Now, not everything is rosy with this printer, because if we look here at the filament entry point on the machine that goes into the run out sensor and don't get me wrong it's good that they've got a run out sensor you can see that the the spool has to come right the way from the bottom here all the way up into the run out sensor it then follows the Bowden tube into the hot end now i'm not quite sure why this spool holder down here is not up here and if we look closely there are a couple of holes here which make me think that at some point they did consider popping the spool holder up there and indeed actually on the USB is this thing which does look like some kind of top holding spool holder for the machine. Um, I haven't played with it to get it to fit or anything like that but I'm sure I probably could and I would probably then also need to move this run out sensor somewhere else because if you think that the actual entry point for the PLA is here if you had a spool holder up here surely the filament could just come straight down in and make it a true direct drive printer as opposed to having to feed it all the way through this Bowden tube which will in some degree or other um, just re increase some of the tension on the PLA and again it's not ideal because the first thing that happens when you run a print is this thing will shoot up to the top it will unravel some of this PLA and then it'll come back down and look we've got this little loop here now oh, with all these wires here and with all the tubes I just think there's a risk of it getting tangled it hasn't happened to me it certainly hasn't happened to me but there's a risk of it whereas if it was sat at the top here it would go straight into it reduce that you'd have just a little bit of length there I, I don't see why they haven't done that and why they put it down the side now don't get me wrong if you're a beginner and you don't want to mess with anything it works fine like this it's not a real major drama or a problem with it but it does mean that I would rather have it at the top. I'm sorry, that, that's all I'm going to say about it. I think they could have done it a little bit better, but they chose to pop it on the side there. Now, the other thing they've given you is, is this thing here. Now, this is supposed to connect onto your spool holder either side and prevent the filament from moving. I just don't like it. That is cheap. That is nasty. I'm not quite sure why they've given you that. I'm certainly not going to use that. I'm just going to leave it as it as it was when it came out of the box. I'm not going to add that into it. 
let's print that bed sheet now this has not been sped up in any way this printer has got some excellent statistics for its printing this thing will throw out prints at 600 millimeters a second with a movement speed of 20,000 millimeters a second now you're probably going to need to slow that down just a little bit if you want some precision in your prints but it can go up to those crazy blistering speeds and it's got an xz belt tensioning automated system because it's just one belt that runs the whole thing which allows for that increased speed and 14 minutes later there it is the bench is done 14 minutes on an ender incredible it probably isn't the best bench that i've ever seen there is a little bit of artifact in it but i really believe that's down to the table that i've put the printer on being so so wobbly so i am going to reprint this bench when it's a little bit firmer but do you know what considering all those things i can't complain at that for 600 millimeters per second on a bed slinger now nah, that's not too bad at all really really pleased with that but i think it's time to print a few more things now you heard me mention the top loader for the filament holder well there it is and there it is printing it. again those insane speeds and once this had done and again this only took about two hours to print there we have what I believe to be a top loader. I need to uh, I need to play around with that and see if I can get it to work. And of course, I'll need to move the runout sensor. But wow, they've given you one, and I've just got to get it on there and get it to work. But look at the quality of that. Absolutely beautiful and smooth and printed at insane speeds. This is throwing out some lovely stuff. Something else here from the USB stick, a print in place phone holder. And it's great to see also that this thing comes with a flexible textured PEI plate, which means getting your prints off is a doddle. I bought an extra one of these for my K1, but this comes standard on the Ender 3 V3. And that's printed again perfectly. I cannot fault that a gift for Mrs. Greedy, methinks. Next thing I'm going to do is a little bit of a test print on it and I ran this again straight off the USB stick and end results were amazing just look at those towers those towers are printed beautifully tiniest bit of stringing but I really am not going to complain about that and when I got it off the PEI plate and popped it down it is a beautiful piece. This thing can really, really throw some precision. Just look at those print in place uh, towers that have just literally popped out. Wonderful. And again, tiny bit of stringing in there. No real problems with the overhang. If we look underneath, all right, there's a little bit of stringing, but I'm not going to complain about the quality of that in a bed slinger throwing out that speed. Now, in true transparent style, I've got to say that Creality sent me this printer. I haven't paid for it. No money has changed hands. They've sent it me and asked me to do an honest review. And that's what I will do, an honest review. You know, if I don't like something, I will say I don't like something. And if I do, I'll say I do. Well, what can I say about this one so far? Well, I guess as a 3D printer goes, when you ask it to 3D print something and it does it, without any fault, without any hesitation, it gives you an excellent result. Then it's doing what it says on the tin, really. And that, for me, is all part of what I want it to do and what it is doing. It prints at insane speeds. It manages to keep the detail at those speeds. It's got a wonderful hot end. It's got a wonderful extruder. I'm really happy with this flexible build plate. Um, I cannot fault it aside from the location of the spool holder, which really, OK, um, we can move that if we really want to. It doesn't take much tweaking or twiddling to put it at the top and just move the runout sensor because you've got to remember as well, it does have a runout sensor and it also has a power restart. So if you do get a power cut in the middle of your print, it will resume that as well, which I think is an excellent function. If you're a beginner with 3D printers and you really do want a hassle-free FDM printer without the worry of levelling and all the rest of the concerns that go with 3D printing from an FDM perspective, then I definitely think this is a great 3D printer for not only the beginner, but when you think about the fact that it's compatible with the multicolor system for us, um, us long term users as well. All right, the build plate volume at 222, 2220, it's not the biggest build volume in the world. And if you really want to build some big stuff, you might need to look at things like the K1 Max, but you're going to pay more money for that. Um, at time of review, which was April 2024, this thing is on the Creality website at $329, um, which I don't think is too bad for what you are getting. It's probably the most expensive Ender 3, but in the same token, it's the best Ender 3 by far. Now, I'd be very interested to hear your opinion on what you think about the Ender 3 V3. Have you tried one? Have you seen one? Have you played with one? What do you think of its design? What do you think of the flaws in it with the 
spool holder there. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? YouTube and the algorithm loves a comments argument. So make sure you put your comments in there. That really does help this video spread far and wide across the YouTube Tinter webinet. Um, let me know what you think of the review too. That would be really helpful. I hope you've enjoyed it today. If you want to support the channel, there's a number of ways you can do that. You can subscribe to the channel, which is free. And those subscriptions make such a difference. So please just take a second and hit that subscribe button. If you want to join the Greedy 3D Patreon, you would be more than welcome to. You can join that from as little as no money at all to a couple of quid a month just to help support the channel and allow me to carry on making videos for you guys. And if you want to buy anything, including this Ender 3 version 3 here, there'll be a link in the description where you can get it from. And I really do hope you've enjoyed this video today. I hope you've found it useful. And I will see you real soon next time on Greedy 3D. Thank you for watching.